the shallots that we're using were just the normal shallots from the supermarket, but they were only about 20 grams, so I just had to use everything that I had. Uh, 20 grams of butter, um, pop it in, the lid on, uh, mix it all up for three seconds, scrape down the sides. Uh, scrape down the sides and then cook it for two minutes at um, 100 degrees. Then I added uh, 50 grams of dried cranberries, 30 grams of raw hazelnuts, two sprigs of black leaf parsley, leaves only, and a pinch of sea salt, a pinch of ground black pepper, and 150 grams of camembert cheese cut into quarters. So then pop the lid on and then chop that all up for 10 seconds. Transfer into a bowl. So this is what I ended up with. So this is my stuffing That's for right. my chicken. And it just says to pop that aside, clean and dry your bowl. Done. Now we're going to place one clove of garlic, half a shallot, about 60 grams. So the shallots were about that big, but they're only about 20, 30 grams. So I just had to use um, an onion in there as well because I didn't buy enough shallots. Uh, 10 fresh chives cut into quarters. 20 grams of butter. Pop the lid on. Come on. Let's go. And just going to chop that up. Um, on speed seven for three seconds. Break down the side. So this is what it looks like, all chopped up. So I'm just going to scrape down the sides. lid back on and it's going to cook for two minutes 100 degrees on speed one there we go okay yeah. and whilst that's cooking I just wanted to talk to you about the different types of stuffings that you could do so if you have a look on cookadoo there are a whole heap of different styles of stuffings and this particular one I have made many a time when we were, um, you know, pre-COVID and we did lots of cooking classes, this was a popular one that we did. And it's a really good one for Christmas. But you can do, you know, bread with rosemary and lemon and garlic and those sorts of things. It's really That's beautiful. You've yeah. Spotlight, you've spotlighted. Oh, ah, so here we go. Okay. You were talking to the other camera. That's all. <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, it's hard with two cameras. Um we're having all tech issues today, aren't we? Anyway, um, so what I also wanted to talk to you about is things that you can do in the Varoma that you normally wouldn't do, um, like, for example, chicken loaf. So when you go to the deli and you purchase chicken loaf, you can make it at home so easily. So if you are into skinny mixes, and I know a lot of you um, have heard of skinny mixes, but if you Google chicken loaf skinny mixes, that's a really lovely one where you just mash up your chicken and you put your flavours in. So what we do here is a bit of um, onion salt, a bit of garlic salt, rosemary, those sorts of things. And you mash it all up and then you put it in the um, glad wrap and tie the ends and then steam it in the Varoma for about 10 minutes. You'd have to check the recipe. Don't quote me on that one. Um, but it's really lovely and you can slice it and that way you know that you're giving your kids or yourself no preservatives chicken loaf and you can flavor it with all sorts of different flavors but give it a go because it is a really different um, way to make a chicken loaf and great for sandwiches even on saladas those sorts of things so give that one a shot now I'll just see where yep mine's just finished now excellent now I'm going to add 500 grams of water tearing my scales back because the lid was on when I moved to this screen so when I took the lid off it went into minus so the scales weigh in one gram increment if it's not at zero you just press the little tear button and it'll take it back to zero 500 grams Uh, 
one to two teaspoons of chicken stock paste. Mm. I've put two in there. Mm -hmm. Now insert the simmering basket, which is this little guy here. And then I'm going to place my six small potatoes cut into three to four centimetre pieces. So I'm just going to pop them in. And that was, uh, yeah, it just said six potatoes. So it didn't, there wasn't a way weighing or anything like that. Any particular yeah. potatoes there, Helen? What um, ones did I, you use? I particularly like the um, the low, low carb ones from Woolworths. So they're the ones. Yep. Now, place three chicken breast fillets onto a work surface. Now, let me, let me move my camera. I'll actually switch to my other camera. Yep. We can do and that. I'll show you. So what we're doing now is we're going to stuff the chicken. So I'll take my. There we go. Let's see if can I can point this down. That. Can you see that all right? Uh, yep. I'll just spotlight it. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I should have done that. Okay. So we have our three chicken breasts and we need to cut them. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. So you cut them so that it, you have an opening, but you don't cut them all the way through. Mm -hmm. Then we get our stuffing and some toothpicks. Nice. And stuffing. Yeah. Just going to stuff it inside. I've already done two just to make it a little bit quicker. I did mute everybody there just for the background noise, but please, if you do want to say something, don't hesitate to take yourself off mute. So you can still see that okay? Yep. All right. So we've popped our stuffing in and we're just using a couple of toothpicks to close that gap a little bit just so it doesn't come open whilst they are cooking. So I'm just pushing them in. And that is about it. Let me go back and see what the recipe says to do next. I'll just quickly wash my hands, actually. Okay, so if you want to flip back to my other camera now, Kirsten. Yep, sure. Uh, where are you? There. Thank you. Okay, so uh, slice each breast horizontally, taking care not to cut through all the way. Fill the chicken with your stuffing. Insert one to two toothpicks along the edge of the opening to enclose the filling. Place, place the three chicken breasts into the Varoma tray. So this is my Varoma. Let me put my lid on here. This is the Varoma. We've got the lid. This is the tray and the bowl. So I'm going to just pop them onto my tray. One. Two, three. I must admit, my chicken breasts were awfully big, so they may not cook in the allocated time. So I'll check them as we go along, see how they're doing. So pop them onto the tray, place it into position, pop the lid on. Next. And they're going to cook for 10 minutes at Varoma temperature on speed two. And then it's going to ask me to turn them over and check them. And then it's going to cook for another 10 minutes. So you won't come back to me until after that last step. So turn it to speed two and it'll be back to you, Kirsten, up to the next person. Okay. Thanks, Helen. Um, so that's a really simple way of doing the stuffing. You could also, if you do have big chicken fillets, what I do is get a meat masher or whatever they're called um, and I flatten it and I put the stuffing in the middle and roll it so that's another way that you could do it as well if you wanted to now for me today yeah I am um, choosing a recipe from the recipe community so there are many wonton recipes on cookadoo but this is my all-time favorite because I love the broth as well and if you're a wonton fan the broth in this is absolutely beautiful so I'm going to walk you through what I did for the broth and then I'm going to show you the wontons because that's the main star of the dish. 
Um, so if we click over here, now what I'll just tell you, what do I hate about cooking? Everyone's got their beef in the kitchen um, and um, some it's time, sometimes it's, you know, other things. For me, it's reading recipes. I feel like, I was just saying to the girls, I feel like I'm running around in circles. Um, but this time I have chosen to do a recipe. So I'm going to read it and manually tell the machine what to do. Normally we're cooking off Cookadoo and it's guided and we just hit next, 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 which is why we love the Thermomix. It takes that effort and that thinking out of our recipes. But what I'm going to do here is just show you the ingredients and walk you through. So first of all, we want to make the broth. So I've got the broth sitting in there, which I will show you after. I'm making two of these because I love it so much that I'm going to freeze this second lot of broth and um, going to have it for next time, ready to go. So it's the second part of the dish. So we want to pop in the simmering basket, as you see here, and we're going to place in two or three. These are quite big. So chicken drumsticks, and you just pop them in like that. Then we're going to pop in some ginger. This is all to make our broth. So round about, I don't know, three, four centimetres. If you love it, put more in. Um, we've got a star anise. We've got coriander, which I forgot, so that's not going in there. Um, we've got some spring onions, really loosely cut up. So two to three spring onions. Now, if you do want to find this recipe, it is the um, Justine, just Google Justine wonton um, Thermomix recipe and it's in the recipe community and it really is lovely. So we've got that. We've got, um, we want to put in some soy sauce. So we're putting in 60 grams of soy. So we're going to manually tell our machine what to do. So I'm going into the scales in the modes because we're not using a Thermomix cookadoo recipe. So 60 grams or thereabouts. We're putting in a tablespoon of rice wine. We've got our star anise, we've got our coriander, which I said that I forgot. And then I'm being naughty, I haven't made my chicken stock. So I'm using just this type of chicken stock. So a liter and a half today. So popping that in. And then we want to pop in, so there's your litre and a bit more. And that's got water in it, but I will put some of my leftover chicken stock that I've got. So a litre and a half of water. And then just to take that bite off it, we're going to put in about a teaspoon of sugar, any type of sugar. Guys, I've used all different types of sugars with this one and that particular thing doesn't really matter. Then what we do is put it on, put the lid on and you're gonna let that cook for about an hour, 90 degrees on speed one. It does say reverse, but there is no need for the reverse. It doesn't really matter. So that's gonna cook. Let's pretend we've done that because I have. Here's one I prepared earlier. So I'm going to show you what we have here, what we have got. Remembering that I forgot the coriander until after, but we've got this beautiful stock and the smell is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to show you what we've got here. So first of all, we've got our cooked chicken and everything in there. Okay. But what we're going to do is pour that. Um, Actually, no, we'll take this out because everything that's in here is going to be discarded except for the chicken, but we want the chicken to cool a bit. And then we are left with, I wish you had, you could smell this, the most beautiful broth. It is really, really lovely. And I'm sure it's great for the gut health too. So that's 
ready, nice and hot. But what we're going to do now is show you what's in the wontons. So I'm going to do that just here. Now I'm doubling this recipe and I have also made this recipe with prawns. I've made it with pork. I've made it with chicken. Today I'm doing it with pork and it, it's really simple and you can pretty much, you know, change it up as much as you like. It's a very uh, forgiving recipe. So um, the difference between the wontons and the gyo gy I can never say that, gyozas, is um, that the gyozas are fried at the end on the fry pan and they have cabbage in them. That's really the only difference. So I'm going to show you these, which are the wontons. And once again, I'm manually cooking. Do I look flustered? I feel flustered today because I never read a recipe except for this one. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to chuck in. Now, the recipe asks for shiitake mushrooms. I didn't bother. I've just got normal mushrooms and I'm chucking them in. And it said about eight. So we'll pop them in. And then we're going to put in um, some garlic. So I've got some garlic here. Um, some spring onions. You can loosely cut them up. I had these out for garnish and then realised I needed them for here. So that's why I've cut them quite small. But, you know, only into two or three, you could do that easily. So we've got um, two to three spring onions there. And we've got, reading this recipe, where are we? See? Um, some coriander. Roots and all. So just give it a wash. Coriander does come out at, um, from the shops and it's quite gritty with the dirt. So do make sure you give it a wash. But you can put roots and all in there. And we're just going to chop that up a little bit. Oh, and the ginger. Now, we love ginger, so I go a bit crazy with it. So pop that in. And we're just going to chop that. 10 seconds, uh, four seconds, speed seven. So four seconds, speed seven. Whoop. All right, the next is 200 grams, which I'm doing 400 because I am doubling this recipe because we love it so much. And I find it to be a great um, after school snack as well. So the kids absolutely love it. So if the mince is there ready to go, they just have to assemble it, put it on the Varoma and they're done. So we've put in about 400 grams of either chicken mince or um, pork mince or prawn mince, whatever you like. And I'm just washing my hands. And then we are going to just mix that up a bit. So we are going to go, and I don't know if Helen has or not, but if Helen was able to, she could pop up the link for this recipe. That would be great. Otherwise, yes, I've I can... done that. Oh, legend. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to mince that on 10 seconds, speed six. So just mixing it in. Okay, then for the wet ingredients to go in. So that's all nicely mixed in. Yep, beautiful. Doesn't look, you know, that appetizing yet, <laughs> but it smells delish. Okay, so the next thing is we've got some soy and I've actually um, put this all in here, but I'll just go through with you what it is. So we've got uh, a tablespoon of soy, half a teaspoon of sesame oil, half an egg white and a pinch of salt. So we'll just pop that in. And remembering I've done a full egg white because I'm doubling the recipe. And then we pop the lid on again and we mix that up. So we do four seconds speed four. 
And that's that part of the recipe done, easy. But now we're gonna do the cooking. Well, not the cooking, we're gonna do the assembly. And I'll show you the difference between a wonton, how to assemble them, and the other one. So there we go, easy. Right, I'm gonna flick you around here. Okay, so I've got two types of um, wrappers here. So these are for the um, goyoses. So they're the round ones and these are for the wontons. So to prepare your, and I'm just gonna do three of each because we're actually gonna have this for dinner a bit later on um, and I don't wanna cook them now. And they are best made straight away, I have found. Um, so I'm going to spray just lightly the Varoma because you don't want them sticking. And then I'm going to wet my hands. I do find that wetting your hands makes it a lot easier and you can stick the sides of your um, little parcels together. So I'll just grab this here. We've got, now I have no idea which camera I'm talking to, this one. <laughs> right, so a teaspoon. There we go. It doesn't look too pleasant at the moment, but believe me, it tastes delicious. I did leave the chili out. Um, you could have added chili as well, but we're not gonna do that today. I'll just pop it on at the end. So I'm just going to put roughly a teaspoon on each one, and then I'll show you how to fold them. And then they're gonna cook between 10 to 12 minutes. Easy. And then I'll show you the end result. And you can make them as full as you want, or, you know, they don't have to be 100%. But what we're going to do here is I'm going to wet my hands and we're going to do the first one, which has probably got too much in it. So this is for a wonton. So all I'm doing is Pressing it down, I've folded it in half like that, right? And you want your hands to be slightly wet because you do want it to stick. Now, what I'm doing here is just squeezing all the air out. And then I'm folding it round to make a little wonton. I'll do that again. So wetting the hands and we fold in half and just squeezing. Now, if you put too much in, just squeeze it out. That is fine. Wrap your fingers around and join them. Yep, oh, see, not wet enough. So that didn't actually stick. And if you leave your dough out, um, it does go quite hard. So don't leave it out on the kitchen bench. So there's another little one and I'll do one more so wet the hands wet the sides if you like I'm this one's actually a bit dry and go like that you don't want air bubbles in there because it will escape out the sides all right there we go so that's your wontons now, to make the gyozas, notice I pause every time I say it. So I have a real <laughs> thing trying to say it. Okay, so to do them, we're going to fold them over like that, right? So you've wet the sides. Now, I was watching Helen do it the other day and she does it a bit different to me. So I think we all do it a bit differently, but you just want to do little pleats in there. And you know what? It doesn't have to be restaurant quality. So that's how so I've done mine. You're pleating the top. Yeah, I pleat them the... both. Okay. Yep. Mine don't look as professional as yours, Helen. So, yes, I think Helen did it like this. Let's give it a go. Let's see if I can do it. So she was pleating just the top of, so just on here. And 
yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I haven't got <laughs> enough patience for that. <laughs> So there Otherwise, we go. Next next time I make them, I'm going to try to use my mold press that I bought from the uh, mix shop. Mix shop. <gasps> yep. Yes. Yep. They should work okay. fine. So there you go. So you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. They taste amazing. Now remember, we've just cooked that broth. So what's going to happen now is we're going to keep cooking that broth for about between. 10 to 12 minutes and these are going to cook and I'll show you now realistically this makes about 30 so you've used the top and the bottom but I'm just doing these just for show today um, so we pop these back on here with our soup which is just in there. So we've got, it's nice and hot. We're gonna pop the lid on. This goes on here. And if I can find the lid to the Varoma. Yeah. So pop that on and we're going to do that I'm manually cooking here so I'm telling the machine what to do so we're going to do for 12 minutes on Varoma so all the way around and I'm going to do this for about speed three because we had this discussion the other day I find that um, even if a recipe says two I like to do it on three or four just to get maximum um, flow so that's going to cook for 12 minutes. So let me have a look at the run sheet because the girls don't have it and I can let them know who's going next. But I believe it is Wendy. So if we head over to Wendy. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to actually try a gluten-free version of that, Kerr. I found a recipe oh, on what to do for the um, wrappers because the ones in Woolies aren't gluten-free. So I think I'm going to oh. give it a go. Be good. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Um, so today I'm cooking salmon fillets with ginger um, sauce and spiced cashew nuts. Actually, my machine's just turned off. So thank you all for joining today. I wasn't quite sure with that sun shining outside if we'd all go on a picnic or a walk. So it's good to see you on here. And if there's any recipe ideas or suggestions that you'd like us to show off for October, please messages or get in touch with Kerr that'd be great yeah we would love suggestions we want to we want to show you what you want to see so please okay sorry my machine wanted to do an update then <laughs> technology for you I had a blank screen then. I wasn't sure whether it was going to come on. Okay, so we're going to start off with a chilli. Um, you can decide if you prefer, so it's not as spicy. I'm just popping that in there. Um, three centimetre piece of um, peeled ginger, which again, we love ginger in our house. So I've put a little bit extra in. And I actually peeled, I had a the kitchen wrap from the mix shop, which is one of the offers this month um, for people if they want to buy new Thermomix. And it's quite a cute. It comes in with the uh, ice cream scoop. See, I haven't used it all. See this, but the potato peeler today I used on the ginger and it was really good. I hadn't used it before. So yeah, I like that one. And being left-handed, that can be a challenge sometimes for me. And we're going to add in one clove of garlic. I'm adding in two and some spring onion. Just trimmed and cut into halves. So again, you don't have to chop up too much on there. Uh, two sprigs of fresh coriander with stems and leaves. I've got three in there because that's what I had left. And then we're going to pop in the lid and the measuring cup. And we're going to go for five seconds on speed seven. So just excuse the noise. Uh, 
and that looks lovely. I'm just scraping down the sides and this will be the basis of the sauce, which I'll give you a look at those colors and the, the aroma from there is so fresh. Yum. I love this one, Wendy. I've had this quite a few times. Unfortunately, my family don't like salmon. So this ah. is something that I cook yeah. when they're not home. <laughs> no, I haven't done this one. So this will be good. But my family loves salmon. So I'm sure they'll be asking for this one again. Uh, so that was one tablespoon of lemon juice. And now we're going to go for two teaspoon of honey. Now, I know a couple of my followers on um, the Facebook and Instagram are actually keto as well. So if you wanted to make this into a keto recipe, you could substitute the honey with either um, stevia or monk fruit sweetener, or if you have available the yacon syrup, that's a special syrup that you can get in New Zealand. So that goes in there. So I just put in a tablespoon, except for two teaspoons, a little bit more than normal. And one tablespoon of soy sauce. Again, I've gone for a gluten-free version just to make sure this is all gluten-free. So if you're cooking dinner for anyone with a gluten intolerance, um, you're okay to use the fountain soy sauce. If they're celiac, I'd go for a soy sauce that actually has got the celiac label on there just to make sure you don't poison them. They won't die or anything. They'll just get a really upset tummy and feel a bit ill. Okay, so 10 seconds on speed two. And that's just mixing all the ingredients up in the bowl. Now I will be using some Chinese spice, spice in the next one. I actually haven't made this one myself for today. It's just the shop bought one, but you can actually mill your own Chinese five spice as well, which is good, which I've done before. And then this is just going to go into a bowl. And save for later. This, this will go on the top of the salmon. Now the beauty with this one is that you don't have to clean the bowl in between the steps. So you get the flavours in there while the aroma is steaming as well. Okay, now we're going to go for one tablespoon of olive oil. Now it's asking for, I can't even say this properly, but Sichuan peppercorns. I couldn't find those. So I'm just using black peppercorns and it just says a quarter of a teaspoon. Pop a few in there. And half a teaspoon of Chinese five spice. Again, I have made this myself and it is really nice and fresh in the thermomix. 60 grams of cashew nuts. It says raw cashew nuts, so I've just got natural cashew nuts on here. So we're cancelling the weighing scales back to zero. Um, we're just going to pop those in. Again, it doesn't matter if you're a little bit over. And a pinch of sea salt. Insert the lid again and the measuring cup. And now this is going to go for four minutes on speed one. So Kerr, you may have to come back to me. Yep. I think and we're heading. Yeah, this is just sauteing everything in the bowl. Fantastic. Thanks, Wendy. Um, so we're heading back to me. I will do that. It's okay. I can nope. do that. Excellent. There you go. Thank you. Okay. So. We're doing wontons in a broth, but we are also doing the gyo gyoza <laughs> um, with a pork gyoza. Sauce. Yes, there we go. Thank you, pork. So we are going to go. This is making. Oh, this is making the sauce. If my camera will stay, there we go. So we're going to hit start cooking. Now this is just a really easy and fresh sauce. Now, one centimeter of um, fresh ginger peeled. I just used all the ginger that I was meant to use in this as well, in the other one, because I said I love ginger, but 
I use it all. So I am just going to skip this step because that's what it's all about. Guided cooking, we can just, you know, substitute and do those things. Um, so instead of one centimetre of fresh ginger and chopping it all up, which is what you do, pop it in three seconds, speed seven, and then scrape down. I'm just going to put that ginger in. So I don't know, about one teaspoon. There we go. Then we want, setting the scales back to zero, uh, 50 grams of rice wine vinegar. Now, surprisingly enough, my husband absolutely hates vinegar, but he liked this sauce the other day. So I thought that was interesting. Um, I just think it all complements each other, all the flavours. 50 grams of soy sauce. One spring onion. Now we're not chopping this, so you do need to chop it how you want it to turn out. Um, so I've chopped it super fine. So one spring onion cut into really thin slices. One teaspoon of sesame oil. I love sesame oil. And then some dried chili flakes. So about, it says here a quarter of a teaspoon, just depending on what you like. And then you just pop the lid on and mix that all up for 10 seconds on reverse, because we don't want to chop up with those onions anymore. Um, so 10 seconds on reverse, speed four. Hit next. And that, now that will all infuse, as you can see there, that will all infuse in time. So whilst we're doing everything else, you do need to scrape the rest out. So I'm just gonna get the spatula and scrape that out. Um, but that will all, sort of you know in time so whilst we're doing the rest that will just taste beautiful you can see that it's really really easy asian sauce so even if you were having um you know steam you muted yourself kirsten we're being tested today <laughs> um if you're having dim sims or something you could easily um you know, have that as well. So that's that. Now I'm going to see if Wendy is ready for us to go back to. How are you going, Wendy? Yes, it's just finished. So I'm just okay. going to start. Yeah, perfect timing. So we're just going to transfer the cashews into a separate bowl. So all the flavours that I've put in there are now sautéed within the cashew nuts. So that they smell really nice, actually. And again, these are for the topping of the salmon. there and again we don't have to rinse the bowl for this next step we're just going to set those aside and then we're going to add in 500 grams of water again just make sure your tears on zero before you start And then we're going to place the Varoma into position. And it's asking for one salmon fillet to go actually into the main part of the Varoma and three onto the tray. So my salmon, I've got a larger piece. So I'm just going to put that onto Actually, you know what I haven't done? I'm a goose, aren't I? I've not put my lid back on. That wouldn't work. <laughs> there we go. We've, we've all done that, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to try the three salmon fillets actually on the tray that you can get from the mix shop. Just so I'm not having to deal with all the 
the gunk that's running off into those holes. So I'm going to pop the tray in. It still keeps the steam vents open so that that can still cook. And we're just going to place the three on the top there. Close that in. So the next step would be to drizzle the teaspoon, tablespoons of the reserved ginger sauce. I'm just going to wash my hand, just bear with me. Okay, so we're going to put some of the sauce over here. This looks lovely. The smell from this is, oh, I just wish you could all smell this. It's so nice. And it looks really pretty too, this dish. I know that when I've made it before, just with all the colours, it's um just a lovely looking dish as well. Yeah. Okay. Run a bit step ahead there with the putting the lid on. Okay, so we're going to put in some zucchini buttons which I've just cut into um, about seven centimetres long. And I'm just going to stand these around into the varoma, just making sure that we keep the holes as much as we can free so that that steam can rise up around the salmon. And then it wants you to put the lid back on. So this is for six minutes. The next part would be then to add some more vegetables in as we go along. Um, so I'm just going to put that on there and I'll start cooking and I'll see you back in a little while. Right, thank you. And we're going to, does the food in the Vroma bowl cook quicker than in the Vroma tray? Um, no, Debbie, they're pretty much the same. So um, it doesn't matter which one you put it in. Um, depending on what you're cooking is um, what you, hang on, let me just spotlight to Helen because we're coming back to her. But yeah, with regards to that, Debbie, it doesn't whether you put it in the top or the bottom tray, it just depends on what you're cooking. So for example, if you've got someone who's vegetarian, um, you'd use that tray in the very top, um, the silver tray that you saw Wendy using, or you'd use um, some wax proof paper so the chicken doesn't go through into the main meal. But if you're happy for it to all go through, um, then that would be fine. But yeah, it doesn't matter. I was just thinking for what Wendy was cooking, um, yep. what she put in the bottom, is that going to cook? Does she have to be careful about timing? Is it going to cook quicker than what she had in the tray? Uh, no. It, well, the, because it's a cook do recipe or a thermomix recipe, it is all designed um, to cook at the right time. And depending on the size of the fish, you may have to do that a little bit longer and take the veggies out. Okay, great. Thanks. Yep. Thanks. Okay, back to me. Yeah. Yep, excellent. Okay, just dropped my earpiece. I'll pick that up. Okay, so what I did, I did my cook uh, for the first 10 minutes, and then it said to turn my chicken breasts over and cook for another five to 10 minutes. So because my chicken breasts were quite thick, I did it for 10 minutes. And then it tells me to remove my chicken and put it onto a plate and then put my vegetables into the dish. So there's just some beans and broccoli in there. And whilst that's cooking for five minutes, so that's my beans and broccoli, pop it on for five minutes. At the same time, um, cook my chicken. So I'm just going to slightly pan fry my chicken just so that it browns the outside. But I didn't want to be bothered doing that because I didn't want to get out a frying pan and have to dirty up a frying pan. So because my chicken breasts were still quite thick, they were, they looked cooked, but just to be sure, I actually just left them in there and cooked them whilst the beans were cooking as well, for just for that extra five minutes. So that's all finished. Now I needed to transfer my chicken and my potato. So there's my chicken, all nicely cooked. Oh, beautiful. And and it's telling me to transfer my chicken breast, my 
beans. I've just chucked in some broccoli as well. Just something extra. So there are my beans, nice and crisp. And my potatoes. into a bowl. So I'm going to get my potatoes out. I'm going to use my spatula. I'm going to lift my lid with my little hook here. I'm going to hook it into the little bowl. If you want, you can, you can drain your potatoes. It has little feet and it will sit on the top of your um, bowl like that. You can drain it if it needs to be drained. And then I can just pull it out. I'm going to just tip them into my thermos server with my chicken. So that is that. Oops. I'll pop my lid onto there. There it is. Sorry if you can't see that my bench space is not very big. But it's going to stay there and keep warm. So retaining the steaming liquid in the bowl. So it's all still sitting in there. I'm going to put 20 grams of dry white wine. I forgot all about this. So I had to quickly run outside and get some. <laughs> thinking oh I don't know how much longer you guys are going to talk for have I got time to run out so there you go it's a little bit extra that's fine two tablespoons of plain flour three tablespoons sorry three teaspoons of English mustard I didn't have English mustard but I had Australian mustard so I'm using that instead and two teaspoons Oh, sorry, two teaspoons of ground horseradish. I don't have any, my husband doesn't like it. So I'm just leaving that bit out. Two teaspoons of seeded whole grain mustard. I don't know why I'm so puffed out. And one to two pinches of sea salt to taste. I'm just going to leave that out. With the measuring cup, where is my lid? There it is. Imagine how puffed out you'd be, Helen, if you didn't have a Thermomix to help you in the kitchen. I know. <laughs> Don't even want to imagine that. <laughs> oh, so without the measuring cup, we're going to cook this for four minutes on 90 degrees. Or is it 100? No, not 100 degrees. And um, speed three. So I'm just going to turn that to speed three. And that's going to cook for four minutes. And then who are we going to go to now? First, We are going to go to me. Hello. Okay. okay. So what I have done, so I've taken off the dumplings um, or the wonton, sorry, and I've put them onto the bowl, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And I have the gyozas here. So you can see they've been steamed. So they are cooked through, but there is the final step that we do here for the gyozas, um, which we just brown them in the pan. So I have just lightly sprayed my pan. When we're in Japan, this reminds me of when we're in Japan and um, we walked the poor kids. We took them 11 kilometres. We thought we'd just start the day off just walking. Mind you, my son was seven at the time. We walked 11 k's to find a chocolate gyoza place and it was amazing. Um, but 11 k's was a very long way. So he will never forget how far we had to walk. But just walking through the streets of Japan, it was really amazing. We've got to see lots. So um, I love that about food. It brings back memories as well. So we're just lightly, and I'll show you exactly how they come out. Really, really lightly fry them off. Whilst that is cooking though, because that'll take about two minutes what I've done here is remember how in the broth we had the chicken. So the chicken legs, I've pulled them out and discarded everything else that I had in the steaming basket. But then I've just pulled off bits of chicken and I have got some, um, just some rice noodles. You could put anything in here. So I've put some broccolini and a few little mushrooms. What we're going to do now is pour that beautiful stock that we've got over the top of this. So, or broth. Sorry, I keep on calling it a stock. I'm going to flip those noises. There we go. So, here we go. 
And this is actually going to cook the noodles. So we'll just let it sit for about three or four minutes before we serve. So that's that. And it really is, I can drink that broth. It is beautiful. So if we have a look here, Here we go, I'll just spill it again, I always do. But look at that, yum. And it's just a bowl of goodness. Now, if you want it to look really lovely, what I would do is sprinkle some spring onions on it, maybe some coriander. For those of you that don't like coriander, my apologies. And a bit of chili as well. And that is just an absolutely delicious meal. So that is the wonton recipe on the recipe community the next one is so these are ready now so i'm just going to grab my plate and show you so how i would serve these is tongs don't work so i'm just going to use my fingers excuse me so i would serve these just like this Turn the oven off, over. So we've got these lightly browned on each side. And then we've got our sauce. Remember the dipping sauce that we had and our chopsticks. And I'll show you, I'll move my camera down so you can actually see them. There we go. How good's that for a dish? And it's so simple. And the only difference between the wonton recipe and the pork one on cookadoo. So the pork one on cookadoo, all you um, add is cabbage into the mix, but you know, you don't have to do the, um, the broth if you didn't want to, but how easy was it? And they are so delicious. And if I actually bite one and just show you the inside, There you go. They are packed full of flavour. Really lovely. Okay, Wendy, are you ready to go? Um, I've just put the extra veggies in, so I've got two more, two more minutes to go. Um, yeah. I probably will have to extend the cooking time because of the salmon, because of the thickness of it, um, which okay. is fine because we can have a ride cooker do. Um, but yep. I can always show the, sorry, that's my dog in the background, someone's at the door. Um, I can always show the um, end result on the Thermomix pages. That's fine. Unless oh, we've got perfect. time to wait. Yeah. Up yep. to you, Kay. Yep. And Helen, I'm ready. Are you, you're ready yep. to present your dish. I will yep. pick over to you. Have a look. So there is my, it's just finished. Transfer the mustard sauce into a serving jug. Oh, this smells beautiful. There is my sauce. If you want to switch to my other, other camera. camera. Which you've got off at the moment. Yep. Yep. Okay. Switched it on. There is my dish. Oh, yum, Helen. And we just pour this over. Oh, my goodness. I had a so huge good. lunch, but you know what? I just want to eat this right now. <laughs> <laughs> that looks superb. That looks really, yeah. really beautiful. Thank you. No um, worries. What I will quickly show you is, Wendy, see how you go, but I will flick to my computer and I'm going to show you just a couple of the recipes Excellent. Oh, Debbie, fantastic. And Debbie, um, I know that you're inspired last week by our cook along and you cooked that damper bread straight away. So um, Helen did share that with me. I hope you don't mind. But it yeah, really so fantastic. Awesome. Oh, was it? Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Well, there you go. And you said you weren't a cook until you got a Thermomix. <laughs> I'm not. Okay. I just read. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go into Cookadoo and I'm just going to show you a couple of recipes that you could start with using your Varoma. So can we all see the, my Cookadoo screen? Thumbs up? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay, 
So today you've seen the cranberry and um, camembert stuffed chicken, really, really lovely. Um, you've got pork here that you could cook with a red wine sauce and vegetables. Um, this one's a favourite of mine, the duck breast with orange ginger sauce and mashed potato. That's a really lovely one. That's also in the Varoma. Um, if you wanted to go sort of, you could have this one as a salad or you can have it hot. So um, either or, so it can be served cold, but this one's a lovely one as well. The Asian chicken noodle salad, really, really lovely. That one's not cooked in the Varoma. That's one that I'm trying a bit later this afternoon. So um, I'm going to give that a crack. Another one that customers seem to love is the easy satay chicken. So with this particular one, you're not using pots and pans. You're actually cooking your chicken in the Varoma and the sauce underneath, and then you can bind them all at the end. So that's a wonderful dish as well that seems to be super popular. You've seen this one, pork gyoza with soy dipping sauce. Really lovely and um, super easy. Another one for those that like to be organised, this one's a prep ahead. Now we have showcased this before in one of our cook-alongs, um, but this is where you cook salmon, shredded chicken, eggs and a stock all in one. Um, and it is obviously, you know, you're cooking your boiled eggs for the week ahead. Um, you're doing your chicken to um, put in sandwiches and things like that over the week or to put in um, rice paper rolls or something like that and you cooked salmon but you do it all in one go and it just saves so much time for throughout the week and then you've got things like your meatballs where you um, put the rice in and all the meatball all the rice kind of sticks out at the end once it's cooked so they're like por porcupine meatballs we call them so those are the sorts of things that you can cook um, and you've seen here, and this is what Wendy's will look like, um, the salmon with ginger sauce and spiced cashews. So that's a really lovely dish. I can highly recommend it. I love it. I've had it quite a few times. That sauce is really, really lovely. So I'm just going to stop sharing that one. Um, Wendy, do you think you're ready or your salmon's got a bit more? Because we can just post your photo. I think a little bit more. So I think... In hindsight, because I hadn't done this one before, yep. I did put the smaller larger steaks. bits of smaller steaks and yep. I'd probably maybe do the se veggies separately. Yep. Would you recommend, have you done that before, Kurt? Uh, no, but I do no. cut my salmon. I do cut yeah, my salmon. Yeah, so that's, that's a rookie mistake I made. So it's the quite big pieces. So it's just that it does say on Cookie Do to prolong your cooking time until your salmon and vegetables are your preferred liking. Um, so yep. there's a little bit of flexibility there, but unfortunately we're out of time. So I will post my photo on um, all things Thermi and we'll do blissfully Thermi and everything Thermi. Um, so if you're not following all our social media pages as well, follow along on Instagram or Facebook. We do have groups um, and we do extra little things as well during the week. I know Helen's been a little star the last couple of weeks. So <laughs> pick up some extra tips and hints from Helen as well. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wendy. And yes, Robin, it all depends on um, how you like your salmon, but definitely you may find that you need to cook it a bit longer. But just like the stovetop, you know, we sort of learn by our mistakes and learn by cooking. So, you know, just because the Thermomix can cook so many amazing dishes, um, sometimes, you know, we need to change the recipes to what we prefer. So if we like it a bit more cooked, then we just do that. Anyway. Thank you for coming today. If you've got any questions, please reach out um, to your consultants or to myself. I hope you've learned something today and we would love some ideas for the cooking classes. So please let your consultants know. We want to know what you want to see. Otherwise, we'll just keep on doing these and um, see how we go. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, Kirsten. Yeah. Debbie, Debbie had a question earlier. Debbie, do you um, want to come off mute and just ask what your question was? Because I wasn't really listening to what person was saying, so I'm not quite sure how to answer it myself. Oh, that's okay. I'm just actually trying to remember what it So what you asked the stock. If it you make stock, yeah. Um, because Kirsten, I think when you um, put stock in, you used the continental uh, liquid. Yep. 
Um, and I'm just wondering if I made the chicken stock myself, how much chicken stock would I actually use? Because you used a litre and a half of the liquid. How, yes. Is that what it said in the recipe, a litre and a half? Or it's a litre a liter and a half of chicken stock uh, liquid. So you would use about three heaped tablespoons of um, chicken stock. Oh, and okay. must I say, if you do make that particular dish, do it with your homemade chicken stock because it takes it to a whole new level. It really does. Um, there's a massive difference between the purchased chicken stock and our homemade one and it is so much better if you've got it there and you've made it please use that because it would be beautiful but yeah three heaped tablespoons so three tablespoons would be the equivalent of one and a half liters of liquid is that right yep yeah right yep thank you because one because debbie one tablespoon of your stock paste is 500 gram 500 mils of water oh great thank you that's what i needed to work out yeah, you could have asked me. Yeah. Yeah. I one, know. One so tablespoon things. to every 500 grams. Thank you. That's great. No worries. Thanks. Glad you enjoyed it, Jody. Thank you. Thanks, Jody. Any other questions? <laughs> nope, awesome. they're all gone except Jody. Did you have a question or are you going? She's probably walked away from her device and forgotten. Oh, she's going. Okay, see you, Jody. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, it's just us. Yep. Yep. Oh, it's just us. I was so freaking flustered in that one. Uh, <laughs> it didn't come across. It's fine. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> Never mind. I'm glad someone hit record. Oh, yeah. Do you want to stop recording? Oh, yes. Whoop. Uh, oh, damn it. I hate when I forget to press to stop record. Uh.